In this clip I will study four sequences and their long-term behavior. And the topic therefore is convergence or divergence of sequences. Consider the following example. Yeah, suppose we look at the sequence with elements n squared, where n is an arbitrary natural number. So we get a1 equals 1 and a2 equals 4 a3 equals 9 and so forth. Yeah, we clearly see that uh, the terms n squared increase so that if we are, are to say something about the sequence in respect to long-term behavior then we would say that a n goes to infinity if n goes to infinity. Well, what do we mean by that? So we try to make this statement explicit. So actually what we mean is that a n, the elements a n, they will be arbitrarily large will be arbitrarily large when n is. So when n is large, then a n will be large as well. And by choosing n large enough, a n will exceed any any number, any real number. So the argument is actually that in order to show that a n goes to infinity, we will show that a n exceeds any number m. Yeah, so we can adjust the natural number n, the index, in such a way that a n becomes larger than a specific, any specific real number m by taking, by picking n large enough. Well, still there is some flexibility in this statement. So we further make explicit what we mean by this. So if we are to show that a n exceeds any number, then well, we might as well choose some number m in R. Yeah, this is an arbitrary number, but once we've chosen m, it will remain fixed. Yeah, so pick m in R arbitrarily, an arbitrary number in R, but a fixed number. Then we will just look at the indices. You know, we look at the indices n such that a n exceeds m. So this is equivalent with looking at all index numbers n such that n squared is at least m. So we know that this inequality holds true if only n is large or equal than the square root of the absolute value of m. Yeah, why the absolute value? Well, m could be negative, right? So this leads us to define what we mean by a n goes to infinity, or written differently, the limit of n goes to infinity of a n equals infinity. Well, we denote a limit n to infinity a n equals infinity if for all, if for each constant m in R there is a first index, you know, the first index, let's say n, a first number in n, you know, so this is a natural number, such that the all the elements with index, index, sub-index, n, large at, at least n, capital N, implies a n is at least m. Yeah, so our task is, now we made this explicit, what we mean by the limit of a sequence equals infinity, then the task is solving for such minimal capital N such that a n is larger than m. 
So in the example we discussed before, with a n equals to n squared, we could take as a minimal element uh, capital N is the square root of m. Well, this is also true if the square root of the absolute value of m would be equal to a natural number. If not, then we can just round off the square root of the absolute value of n to the nearest largest larger integer. So if n is chosen larger than capital N, then we see that a n equals n squared, and for n larger than capital N, n squared is at least capital N squared, which equals the square root of the absolute value of m squared, which is the absolute value of m, which is at least this constant m. Well, consider the following example. So now we take a n equal to r to the power n minus 1. So we take powers of some number r, with r is larger, is a constant larger than 1. Well, our claim is that the limit of this sequence is infinity. Well, we prove it as, as follows. Take an arbitrary m larger than 0, but fixed, then we need to show that at some point we have a n is at least m for all indices n larger than some fixed number capital N. So actually we need to show that r to the power m minus 1 is at least m, which is equivalent with, if we take the r log on both sides, yeah, and now we see why it's useful to have a positive m. We can take a r log on both sides of this inequality. And since the r log is in increasing for r larger than 1, we see that the inequality is maintained. So actually, we see that n minus 1 should be at least r log of m, which is equivalent with the statement that n should be at least the r log of m plus 1. So what is the number capital N that we might take now? Well, it's just the nearest integer larger than R log of M plus 1. So this is also usually denoted by this typical bracket. So this is called the Nj of the R log of M plus 1, which is simply the number r log of m round off, rounded off above to the nearest in the integer. So we may conclude that for n at least equal to this capital N, we have for n larger than capital N, that this implies that r to the power m minus 1 is at least equal to the number m, in which case we've shown that a n is at least the value m. So this is an exact proof of the statement that the limit of n goes to infinity of r to the power m minus 1 equals infinity. Yeah, so we conclude that the limit of n to infinity of r n minus 1, r to the power n minus 1, equals infinity. We can also illustrate what goes on in a picture, in a graph. So suppose we have an xy axis and at the natural number 1, 2, three, etc. we will plot the elements of this sequence a n. So we have a n equals a1 equals 1, a2 equals r, etc. So this is an exponential function. So these dots are on the graph of the exponential function r to the power x. And 
now we have to show that for some moment in time the values a n are larger than some value m, the constant m. Well, we see that actually for this specific value of m, we see that this happens for for n at least four. Yeah. So if we look at n equals four, then we see that clearly that the elements take on values larger than this constant m. Yeah, so here we see R log of M and its rounded off version, which is capital M. Yeah, so for any value of M, we should be able to show that the graph of the sequence belongs to a red upper right uh, uh, area. Uh, so all points on the graph of AN should belong to some red area indicated indicated here for n larger than at least equal to some value of capital N. Well, when the limit of n goes to infinity, of a n is infin infinite, then we also call this a divergent sequence. Yeah, so the sequence is unbounded, and we therefore call the sequence divergent. In this example, we'll discuss another divergent sequence, which is a sequence according to which the values a n do not close in to some specific value. Well, focus at a n equals r to the power m minus 1. But now take r smaller than minus 1. Well, for instance, we could take r equal to minus 2. Yeah, so we get a n is equal to minus 2 to the power n minus 1. Yeah, which equals, of course, minus a half times minus 2 to the power n. And we see that actually for n is an odd number, we get 2 to the power n minus 1, so we get positive uh, values. Yeah, so the sequence explodes, so the sequence tends to infinity. And if n is an even number, then we get minus 2 to the power n minus 1. So if we go through all even numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8, etc. Then the tendency of this uh, sequence is that it tends to minus infinity. Yeah, the sequence values, the values of the sequence become arbitrarily small. Well, how does it look in the graph? We see that we have a sign change once we have for odd numbers, we have positive numbers. For even numbers, we have negative ones. And we see a kind of uh, flipping around, an alternating sequence of positive and negative values. Yeah, and it's immediately clear that the values of the of the of the sequence of this graph of the of the values of this sequence do not close in to a specific value. You cannot even say that the limit of a n equals infinity or that the limit of a n equals minus infinity since the direction of the sequence is not clear because it's alternating between positive and minus and, and negative signs. In this case we also say that the limit of n to infinity a n does not exist. Well, in the former example, I touched upon um, a sequence or a subsequence, basically, of elements which had a tendency to go to minus infinity. Well, we actually might define 
This is as follows, the limit of n to infinity of some sequence a n equals minus infinity if the sequence takes on values which become arbitrarily small. What does it mean? Well, for all constants m small than zero, there should be a first index in n, so a natural number, capital N, such that for n at least equal to this capital N, it follows that a n is smaller than m. So for capital N, capital N plus 1, capital N plus 2, etc., all corresponding uh, values of the sequence uh, should be smaller than m. So actually, what does it mean? We can make a n arbitrarily negative or small. So, instead of going to infinity now, the terms of the sequence explode to the minus infinity. And I'd like to stress here that when we write the limit n to infinity a n is infinity, or the limit n to infinity a n is minus infinity, then we mean actually that the limit limits do not exist, but that uh, the sequences are divergent. Yeah, so the infinity or minus infinity are, uh, are meant to express that the terms of the sequence uh, are uh, directed towards infinity or towards minus infinity. So actually, infinity or minus infinity in this de definition indicate a kind of direction of growth. In the coming clips we will discuss convergent sequences where the values of, of a sequence a and become arbitrarily close to some number l, which we will call the limit of the sequence.